Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to my updated tier list for patch 3.3c. This will include both the new champions, Sion and Samira. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach to this tier list because I think me talking for one hour or over an hour beforehand actually completely messed with my voice and I couldn't talk for a very, very long time and I had a really, really sore throat. So I'm actually going to cut the video down and just focus on the champions that mainly got changes from the last tier list to now this tier list depending on obviously patch notes and everything like that as well if there is a champion that you have any questions about or maybe a champion that you think deserves to be in a higher tier or lower tier please do let me know down in the comments and as always if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button for more wild rift content especially with patch 3.4 coming out very very soon and make sure you like the video as well so let's start things off with the baron lane now there's a few champions that got changed in the baron lane in the most recent patch but first off let's talk about scion scion i think is a pretty decent champion i think he's fairly strong i put him in the a plus tier i do feel like maybe he is a little bit maybe stronger than a plus i'm not really too sure i i think that he's definitely sitting around the the a plus or the the s tier in a way i'm not really too sure like whether he deserves to be here or maybe a little bit higher in s tier i'm not 100 certain but i do feel like the scion is fairly strong he does scale very well he is very very tanky the problem is is that divine sunder is still very very strong so he is very very weak against you know divine sunderer because um scion stacks health and divine sunderer does damage based on how much health the enemy champions have but his wave clear is pretty good his split push uh, pushing is pretty good you can use his ultimate to get into team fights whenever you want to or he can go around the map wherever he likes um, I do feel like he's a pretty strong champion overall. I do feel like, you know, he's okay. You can definitely give him a try. Let me know if you have given him a try down in the comments. The next champion we're going to talk about is Camille. Now, Camille for me is staying just in the S plus tier. She has the potential to maybe move down into S tier, but I don't really feel like the nerfs were maybe enough. The nerfs were basically to Camille were basically to stop her mobility and her utility. You know, the second ability, for example, uh, the slow got nerfed. It now has 80%, but it gets reduced over time instead of 80% throughout the whole two seconds. Uh, so it means that he she can't really walk up and auto attack as much as much and as often as before her third ability uh hook shot that got a huge huge nerf but uh, you do get a little bit of a cooldown i guess reset or a cooldown uh, reduction i should say uh when you do land your third ability on an enemy champion but the problem is most of the time with camille you're not really using it to actually hit a champion you're more using it to gap close so you can use your ulti and your other abilities on top of that so it's a bit of a nerf to camille um and it is a bit of a nerf to split push Camille as well. Because split push Camille, most of the time you want to use your hook shot to get away to safety. But it's going to be on a longer cooldown now, which means you probably can't use it a second time to try and escape. You have to make sure you use your first hook shot wisely. <laughs> and then last um, change is to her ultimate. Uh, her ultimate got a cooldown um, increase. I uh, went up by 10 seconds at every single rank i don't think this makes a lot of difference at all i think that's completely fine i still think camille's ultimate is one of the strongest in the game really good at isolating a target really really good at allowing you to you know follow up and your team to follow up afterwards once you um ultimate a very very strong target you can also push champions uh, enemy champions away from you so i think overall it's still a very very strong ultimate like i said overall it's not that bad i i think that camille is still in a pretty decent spot and i still think camille will be completely fine next let's talk about fiora now fiora got a buff to her health per level it wasn't really that big of a buff so to be honest i think fiora is just going to stay as she is i don't think she's going to move anywhere at all i think fiora just stays in the s tier for now and i still think she's completely fine i don't think she's uh, moves up or she moves down at all uh she still is in a pretty good spot whether they buffed health uh, health per level or not but the health per, le health per level doesn't really mean too much i mean it's like extra 150 health and max rank which let, lets her scale a little bit better but i still think she's only in the s tier um Jax, Jax got a pretty big ad nerf in this patch um Jax's ad went down I, I believe it was either four or six i can't remember the number correctly um but this affects Jax a lot um his later phase is going to be weaker because all of his abilities pretty much scale and got you know the damage is based on your ad so that means that not only your auto attacks are going to be weaker but also your abilities are going to be weaker in the early game um i think once you get again two or three items Jax is just going to be unkillable that's why he stays in the s tier because if you can play safe and if you don't basically enter in the early game you get three items you get like divine sunderer uh death stance hole breaker or even blade the rune king if you really, really want to play aggressive 
uh, then I think Jax is still unkillable. That extra 4, 6 AD that you're missing early game, you're not going to feel it at all in the late game. Jax is still very strong. He still jumps on carries. He still auto attacks. He still pushes towers very, very quickly. And he does a load of damage. So again, Jax, he does move uh, down from S plus to S tier. But I do feel like he's in a... Uh, a pretty decent spot. I think he's okay. Uh, Pantheon. Uh, Pantheon got a few buffs. I did see a little bit of mid lane Pantheon. Um, if you don't know, the uh, Asian Invitational is on, on at the moment um, for um, for Korea, Southeast Asia, and Japan. Uh, there's just a bunch of invited teams that are playing against each other. I did see uh, Pantheon mid being played by Coyote on Team Flash. Um, it did seem okay. I, I don't think it seemed that bad. I think mid lane Pantheon is definitely mid lane Pantheon is definitely better than Baron lane Pantheon. I think Baron lane Pantheon definitely struggles a lot against these bruisers. But mid lane Pantheon, if you can come up against you know the assassins or something, because of how much burst damage uh, Pantheon can do, and even mages, if you can get within range of your second ability, do a lot of burst damage, then Pantheon can be very very strong. I think his build path is also pretty decent as well at the moment. But again, like I said, in Baron lane, I still don't think Pantheon is that strong. Maybe he's in A plus tier but I just kept him in A tier for now. Um, but if I see some more Pantheon, and if I have any more details on Pantheon, then maybe I'll move him up a tier. But for now, he stays in A tier. Renekton, even though he was S plus in the previous patch, uh, in my opinion, um, the health per level has gone up. So pa Renekton is still getting buffed, but it's mainly for late game Renekton. Early game Renekton is still very, very strong. It's probably one of the strongest uh, bruisers at the moment um, in the early game. But... The thing is, if you fall behind or if you get even on gold, then it's going to be very, very hard for Renekton. You need to try and get a early game lead or try and get some sort of early game advantage, whether it's through gold, whether it's through tower placings, kills in the early game, anything like that. Because Renekton definitely, you know, finds it hard, especially when it maybe comes to team fights, because he's not as tanky. He's not like a, a big, massive bruiser. You know, he's he only really builds Black Cleaver as like a tank item. Yes, you can go maybe like Holebreaker, Death Stance, but he likes to build Blade the Rune King as well. So he's going to be very, very squishy um, when he tries to dive in. So he needs to try and get early game lead to try and get a few items under his belt. And then he might be a little bit more tanky. He might be able to do enough. But Renekton, still one of the strongest bruisers in the game at the moment. Still one of the strongest Baron laners. So I think he will be completely fine. And obviously Teemo got a buff this patch as well, but Teemo is absolutely absolutely rubbish so it doesn't even matter if he gets buffed a million other times i still think teemo is not that great um teemo is just it doesn't offer much at all yes your streams could be called around objectives because you can slow by quite a lot and you can do a lot of damage but that just gets countered by sweeper straight away there's multiple sweepers on the enemy team then all your streams are just gonna be cleared uh, and also he, he, he you know he doesn't really do that much damage at all so that is teemo um in terms of other champions to mention um, you still have like the strongest champions in S plus there, you know, Wukong, uh, Garen, Darius, Riven, and uh, Riven, Renekton, Camille. I still think they're all the strongest. Again, the S tier champions in Baron Lane can definitely change. Um, they definitely can move up a tier, you know, like Jace, for example. Uh, Gragas, the tank build is very strong. Fiora. I really have the only reason she's in S tier is because she's a little bit more difficult to play, but she can definitely be an S plus tier if you understand how to play her. And the same with Set as well. They still think Set is uh, is pretty damn strong. Uh, a plus, Kennen is still there. Kennen is still pretty strong at the moment. Olaf, Graves, uh, Malphite. Again, Malphite's not really that as strong as like the Bruisers because of Divine Sunder again. And Akali's there because of her early game. You got Dr. Mundo and Nasus uh, down in A tier because they just don't really offer too much, unfortunately, at the moment. Trendemir and Singe, and then you have Teemo and Kale. Honestly, Kale could probably move down to D tier. But there we go. That's my opinion on that one. Uh, jungle. Jungle has not really changed too much. Uh, there's not really a lot of champions that have changed. Um, Camille, I already spoke about her, but Camille uh, with the nerfs, I do feel like the nerfs to Camille definitely affected her a lot more in jungle now camille loves to use hookshot in jungle to either gank or to get around the map a lot quicker but obviously with the increased cooldown that means that camille can't get around the map um as quickly as before um this also affects her when she's trying to clear through jungle camps as well um because she wants to like hookshot over the wall and just clear it very uh, very quickly instead of having to walk around but now you have to be a little bit more careful because it is on a very very long cooldown so you do have to be careful with that so camille's moved down from s tier to a plus tier i do still feel like she's a champion that's still very strong in the jungle because her ultimate is still very strong and she can clear, still clear the jungle very very quickly um but again maybe not as strong as like the s and the s plus tier champions um, Fiora as well stays in S tier with her buff, uh, health buff per level. Again, it didn't really change her too much in the jungle. She still clears jungle very quickly. She still is very, fairly, fairly strong. Uh, so she is sitting up in the S tier for me. Uh, Jax, after the AD nerf, I have moved in down to A+. 
um it, it really really affects him in the early jungle clear now his early jungle clear is very very slow um i say very very slow maybe it's not as slow as other junglers but now because the passive doesn't stack on jungle and also he got nerfed by like four to six ad that's a huge huge nerf to jack's jungle it means that he's not gonna be able to clear the jungle near enough as quickly as what he did a few patches ago um but again if you get a few items if you scale then jacks can still be jacks in the middle late game that's why he's not like down in like a tier or b tier he's still a plus tier i still think that he can work and he still can be uh very very strong uh, and then pantheon stays in a plus tier as well um i i don't think the buffs affect pantheon too much uh, because it was empowered Q, which maybe yes, empowered Q can help you clear through the jungle quicker, uh, and also cooldown reduction on third ability, which doesn't really do too much in our jungle anyway. I think it's more of a buff to laning pantheon than jungle pantheon. Uh, but again, pantheon is still a plus tier, still completely fine. Uh, as for the rest of jungle, nothing's really changed. The S plus tier champions are still S plus tier because nothing really got changed. Uh, Shivana still does really well. Wukong, Lee Sing, Karzix, and Olaf, all these champions are very strong. You still got S tier champions are also very strong. Uh, I will probably change Vi to uh, Conqueror at some point when i update the uh the builds uh very very soon uh i might wait for patch 3.4 because i still think kraken say vi is fine but again everything might change when patch for uh, 3.4 comes out which coming out in a couple of weeks time which i'm very very excited about but yeah Redia still works well is in jow morgana riven nautilus as a tank echo scales really really well evelyn's still really good fior and gragas all these champions are still amazing uh even a plus tier as well there's still a lot of champions here that are very good you know i've seen a lot of javan recently which has popped off very well camille still works rengar might be able to go a crit build now with navori quick blades same with gragas as well, uh, graves as well with navori quick blades could be very good um you know pantheon jacks they're all still fairly fine uh ramus mosty and amumu they're still in the a tier uh, i think ramus is definitely the better out of the three and i've definitely seen ramus's pop off uh but mosty again doesn't off too much and amumu is just um, not that strong and then dr mudo doesn't really get played in jungle anymore and trendamir just doesn't work in jungle either because his jungle clear speed is very very slow because they basically changed it so his passive doesn't work on jungle anymore moving on to mid lane now Mid lane first, uh, Kassadin. Kassadin did get a nerf to Null, Null Sphere. Basically does nothing at all. Kassadin is still insanely strong right now. His laning phase is still very, very good. Again, Kassadin maybe changes for, uh, to Fleet Footwork instead of Electric Q. I think if you're in a losing matchup or if you're in a matchup that you can maybe feel like uh, you're going to get poked down a lot or maybe take a lot of damage, then Fleet Footwork is definitely better than Electric Q. Electric Q is still really good though. If you can trade, if you can walk up, so you're against Akali, for example, you can walk up, try and trade and proc Electric Q and do a little bit of damage uh, in the early game. But um, Kassadin, even after nerfs, He's still completely fine. There's nothing wrong with him at all. Uh, Vagar did get a nerf to Event Horizon. The Event Horizon did go up by a few seconds at every rank. Uh, I still think Vagar is still fairly good. I still think he's S tier. Um, I still think he's um, pretty good at zoning with Event Horizon, especially because of how much ability he should build already uh, with Vagar. You know, um, Luna's Echo, Archangel Staff um i'm sure there's other items that i can't think of right now that gives him more ability haste but i think he's still completely fine he still scales really well he's still very safe in the laning phase he can still escape ganks very quickly with event horizon but i still think he's completely fine uh corky is the other one corky got some huge huge changes in the in this most recent patch uh, and corky has moved up to the s tier uh basically black cleaver corky um basically doesn't even work anymore because your third ability doesn't give you um, extra physical damage anymore it basically works off magic damage and it only works off magic damage now so the best and go-to build for corky right now is crit corky essence reaver infinity edge all the items like this work extremely well with corky and i will be doing a video on him very very soon probably tomorrow i will do a video on him because uh, i got a really really good game and i'll explain to you all how corky works now with all the new changes um so yeah that video will be coming out very very soon but corky moved up to the s tier mid lane is very very strong and other than that nothing else has really changed no other champions got changed at all uh in the mid lane they're still the strongest champions at the moment ari diana Kastin, and karma all these champions are insanely strong especially karma still very strong still does a lot of damage people saying after a nurse she's not too strong but she's still completely busted um s tier definitely some champions that can move up a tier like iredia like katarina but both of these champions are very hard to place so that's why i put them down the s tier because they're not as easy as like a casting uh ari diana and karma maybe cast Maybe Kassadin's a little bit difficult to play in the early game. Uh, but again, she, he just, you know, scales infinitely and he's just completely broken at the moment anyway. Uh, Zed is still really good. You still got Ziggs, Galio in the mid lane, Twisted Fate, Yasuo, Oriana. Lucian mid lane is still very, very strong. Gragas as well. And then you have Vagar and Corky. A plus, 
we got akali akshan jace fizz singed echo and kenan um definitely some of these champions are very very strong and can and can definitely move up a tier but i just don't feel like they fit in the same category as the s tier champions you know like akali for example scales very very well akshan is very good in some matchups and akshan and lucian are very good counters to casting if you ever get into that situation uh jace is fairly good fizz is very good at one shot potential Sinjako and Kenan is still very good. A tier are champions that, you know, can work. They can work pretty well. But to be honest, they're just very one-dimensional and they're very, very difficult to play. You know, like Lux is very difficult at times because if you don't land your CC, then you're pretty completely screwed. Annie has to basically get into melee range and only has one combo. If that combo doesn't one shot, then she's completely useless. Uh Brand finds it very difficult in the laning phase. She can you can be really good during team fights because he spreads a lot of damage, but other than that, kind of useless. Uh Aurelian Soul has to roam a lot. Um, and if your roams don't um, work out, then he's not really that strong. Same with Morgana. Morgana is pretty meh at the moment. Wave clear, not really too strong. Morgana's support, uh, duo lane has definitely been um, doing pretty well. And then you have B tier, Seraphine, and to be fair, Kale should move down to, to C tier. Kale should definitely move down to C tier here. I don't think Kale's on the same um, category as uh, Seraphine. I think it's either Seraphine moves up to A tier or Kale moves down to C tier. I have to change that for sure duo lane let's talk about samira right samira 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 now i do think she's quite strong uh, i have played her quite a lot now I've, I've done like a few videos on her i've done a few games on stream i do think she's very very strong uh, a few things to mention with her um you need to make sure you play a engaged support or a support that has cc to help her out uh with her passive and help her out with stacking her um passive to try and get her ultimate as soon as possible her laning phase is not as strong her first ability doesn't really do that much damage in the early game you mainly just want to stay back and farm up as much as possible in the early game but once you get three items once you get four items with samira that's really where she comes online samira is very very strong at three or four items she could basically win a team fight but she's very much like katarina she wants to try and stay at range and find the right time to go in because if she goes in like at first and she uses her as ultimate if the enemy team has any source of cc at all that's it you're dead and it's exactly the same as katarina as well which is why i've not put her in the s plus tier i put her in the s tier because she's very very difficult to play very very difficult to master uh and you probably need to practice her for a few games before you actually reach to a point where you can actually carry with samira and she can feel very very strong in her hands i think she's very good in low elo high elo she's definitely a little more difficult to pull off because a lot of people are very fast on reactions and will know how to counter samira very well um, but yeah i still think she is very very strong and she is a cool champion that wild rift have added uh, to the game um corky as well uh, i'm with corky back up to s tier as well because of the new crit builds uh, again i will be doing a video on that very very soon but corky after the changes definitely feels a lot stronger um i definitely feel like he does more damage now and again this whole black cleaver corky is now up the window which is quite fine now, the thing that I changed in the dual lane tier list, um, I did like put Lucian by himself up in the S plus tier. Um, but I felt like that was a little bit, maybe a little bit too overboard. Uh, I do feel like there are, are there are some other champions that are definitely S plus tier worthy and are definitely very, very strong. You know, Kaisa, Caitlyn, Zyra, and Ezreal, all these champions have insane benefits for ma many different reasons. You know, Kaisa scales extremely well. His her laning phase is really weak, but other than that, she's still really strong. Kane has the longest range of the best laning phase out of any ADC in the entire game right now. Zaya is insanely strong, very good self peel. Same with Ezra at the same time. And I do feel like these S plus tier champions are just above the S tier champions. Uh, the only champion that maybe could move up into S plus tier is Tristana. Uh, but again, she is still quite difficult to play even after the changes happened to her a few patches ago. But in S tier, we got Jinx, uh, we have Samira, which I just spoke about. You know, Jinx and Vayne are very, two very late game scaling champions, not very strong in the early games. So they can be quite difficult. Draven is completely the opposite. Early game champion that wants to try and get snowballing early game. If he doesn't, it's very, very difficult. Uh, Varus is still really good. Tristana and then Corky. A plus tier. Ash is like, okay, can maybe move into S tier. I think once uh, Mandate comes out. Uh, imperial mandate which is a new items coming out to wild rift i think that ash will be uh, much stronger Jin is not really that strong at the moment uh and then you have your ap champions which is ziggs oriana and lux in the a tier we have all the other ap champions uh seraphine morgana karma which can work quite well um but maybe not too much and misfortune is there as well uh akshan is kind of man dual lane much better in the solo lane brand vega and then senna which you never want to play for um farming senna but if you do she is down in the c tier you know she you don't really get a lot of benefits when playing senna farming 
Right, then moving on to the support tier list. Support tier list is the, uh, the final one. Um, not really too much to say about support tier list. I think I've moved a couple of champions. I moved uh, uh, Nami up into the S plus tier now um, because Nami is insanely strong. Uh, I think she is a very, very strong uh, champion right now. She trades very well. She's very good in team fight. She has engage. She has disengage. She has everything. So I definitely feel like she is up there with Karma and Yumi. I do feel like Karma and Yumi are strong. Like if if I did have an S plus plus tier, I'd probably put Karma and Yumi up there, and then Nami and S plus, and then S tiers are just underneath her. Uh, but she is definitely stronger than all the S tiers. But she is weaker than Karma and Yumi, so it's a bit difficult to kind of put her in her place. But I've left her up in S plus tier. But yeah, Karma and Yumi still both very strong. A lot of shielding. A lot of healing. A lot of poking, a lot of carry potential. Still both insanely, insanely strong. Um, S tier, we still have Thresh. Very good uh, carry that can engage and disengage. Pike is a very good carry support. Rakan as well. Lulu, another enchanter, but maybe not as strong as the ones above. Alistar, Nautilus, insanely strong. Especially Nautilus right now. I do feel like Nautilus is very, very strong. Especially after the bust a few patches ago. I think his lockdown is insane. His crowd control is very, very good. <clears throat> and he's very, very good at just... Like I said, just locking down one person. Um, I mean, even in the team fights as well. He's also very tanky. He also does fairly well during the laning phase. He does struggle a little bit against enchanters. But if he finds a uh, a, um, a way to engage, you know, and then you have like Samira or Lucian with you, then he can be very strong. Jan is a very good peeling support. That works very well. Then you have Leona, Galio, and Brom in A+. Um, I think all these champions can work. They can be very good, especially Leon and Galio. Brom, they, maybe not too much because Font's life has just been nerfed so much. And he doesn't have a lot of playmaking potential for uh, carrying in the support role. Whereas Galio and Leona definitely have the uh, more carry role in the A plus tier. In the A tier, we have Senna. I still think Senna's pretty decent as a support. Um, she is still very, very good. Then you have Sona, Soraka, Seraphine, and Lux. Lux can definitely maybe move up a tier, especially to the buffs that she got to her second ability. I do feel like Lux is very, very strong right now. Uh, Sona, Soraka, and Seraphine, I, I still think are in fairly the same spot. I still think they are very, very... Uh, they are very, very good in certain situations. You know, Sorak has a lot of healing. Uh, same with Sona as well, but she's very weak during early games. She just needs to scale up a little bit more. Uh, Seraphine is still pretty good. In the B tier, we have kind of unique champions that can maybe work. Set can definitely move up a few tiers if you understand how to play set and how to play support set. Um, but again, it's quite difficult to play. Shen is not too great. He's like, okay. Then you have Morgana, which is probably one of the weakest in terms of enchanters. Because support, support Morgana just doesn't feel right. It feels weird for some reason. Whereas PC League, it feels right. In Wild Rift, it just feels weird. And then Blitzcrank as well. Blitzcrank's down in the C tier. Uh, but yeah, that is everything for every single role. As you can see, uh, a lot of S plus tier champions. Uh, a lot of S tier champions as well. You got A plus, A, B, and then a few C tier champions. With maybe Kale moving down to D tier on both of them, to be honest. Because Kale is just complete i tried to play kale i tried to get a video on her new psyop skin it didn't really work too well um but yeah as i mentioned or as always uh wild rift fire is a website that i run with the guys from mobile fire i uh, have a bunch of champion builds on this website you also have gwen which i'll be releasing a um a build on the website very very soon you're also going to have yone here as well uh, if you click on the page it just says coming soon at the moment uh, but i will be adding builds to these champions very soon so you can maybe um get a little insight into the champions before they release this month um but yeah very very exciting stuff you know you got if you want to have a look at guides you can just click on a guide go through here it tells you your build tells you runes i have a, a video there as well most of the time explaining combos abilities early game mid game every single uh, rune and why you run it and then a little conclusion conclusion at the bottom with all of my social media there so yeah hopefully you all enjoyed the tier list uh thank you very much for tuning in um as always, take care of yourselves, and I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Peace.